Today we are going to be learning about prime and composite numbers. We're going to start off by looking at whole numbers and see how prime and composite numbers fit into the whole numbers. Okay, so let's first find out what whole numbers are. So our whole numbers which we can represent with a symbol n0 or w are basically all of the numbers that you use when you're counting things including 0. So whole numbers or n0 are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. Okay, so those are our whole numbers. Then we've got our natural numbers which are part of the whole numbers. And natural numbers just have the symbol n. Now you'll see that the symbol n is very similar to the symbol n0. So the symbol for natural numbers is very similar to the symbol for whole numbers. The only difference is that the symbol for whole numbers over here has a 0 attached to it. And that's because the whole numbers are the same as the natural numbers with 0. Whereas the natural numbers do not include 0. So they are just from 1 upwards. like that. Okay, so now our natural numbers can be split up into a couple of different groups. We have got our prime numbers, and in the prime numbers we have numbers which are only divisible by 1 and themselves. In other words, we learned yesterday about factors, so prime numbers only have 1 and themselves as factors. So they only have two factors. They have exactly two factors. And those two factors are 1 and itself. Okay, so those are our prime numbers. Then we have our composite numbers. The composite numbers are almost all of the rest of our natural numbers. Okay, so the composite numbers are all the numbers that have more than two factors. So they have one and itself, and then it also has other factors in between the one and itself. And then we have one other number that doesn't fit into the prime numbers or the composite numbers, and that is the number 1. So number 1 is not prime because it doesn't have two factors, and it's not composite because it doesn't have more than two factors. In fact, the number 1 only has one factor, so it is not prime or composite because it only has one factor. And that one factor is obviously the number one. Okay, so that is basically all the numbers that we have. Now let's just draw this for ourselves and see how they all fit together. So we've got our whole numbers. Okay, so there's our whole numbers. In the whole numbers, we have got zero sitting all on its own over there because it is not part of the natural numbers, okay? But all the rest of the whole numbers are also natural numbers. So everything else, except for zero, fits into this um, circle over here. So I've got my natural numbers over here. Okay, and the natural numbers can be split up into three sections. We've got one little section where we've got one sitting all on its own because one only has one factor. And then we have got our prime numbers which have two factors. And then we've got our composite numbers which have more than two factors.
and that is how our whole numbers can be split up okay or what makes up the whole numbers so now we're going to focus more on our prime numbers and our composite numbers and find out a little bit more about them okay so first of all you're going to do an activity now okay and in this activity we are going to identify um, in this hundred square over here we're going to identify all of the numbers that are not prime okay so we're going to color in all the numbers that are not prime so over here the first number we're going to start with is the number one because we said number one is not prime is also not composite so we're going to color that one in because we know that it's not a prime number then you can use the divisibility rules or multiples whichever one is easier at any given time to help you to identify all the composite numbers which are not prime numbers okay so I'm going to start off by helping you with this and then you're going to finish it on your own so first of all let's have a look at all the multiples of 2 now I'm not going to do the first multiple of any number unless it's already colored in obviously okay so the first multiple of 2 I'm not going to do but all the other multiples of 2 I am going to color in now we learned with our divisibility rules that multiples of 2 are all of our even numbers they are all the numbers that end with two four six eight or zero okay so I can color in all of the numbers that end in two four six eight or zero except for the very first one I'm not going to color in the number two but I'm going to color in all the rest of them so I'm going to do all of these ones that end with two and all of these ones that end with two and I'm going to continue then once I've done all of the multiples of 2, I'm going to color in all the multiples of 3, except for the first one. Then we're going to color in all the multiples of 4, which I will actually have already done by doing the multiples of 2. So you don't even have to really do it. Then all the multiples of 5. Then all the multiples of 6, which again you will have already done because of doing, doing 2 and 3. Then all the multiples of 7. Then 8 and 9 and 10 and 11. And you can stop there. Okay, once you've done all the multiples up to the multiples of 11, then we'll take another look at this. So I'm going to give you four minutes to do the rest of this table.
Okay, you should hopefully be done with that by now. So let's go through that and fill in the rest of the table. Okay, so we've already done the multiples of 2 that end with 2 and 4. Let's do the rest of the multiples of 2. So all those that end with 6. All those that end with 8. And all those that end with 0. Okay, so those are all the multiples of 2. Then we can do the multiples of 3. But again, we're not going to do 3 itself. We're going to start with 6, which is already done. And then we've got 9. Then 12 and 15. Then 18 and 21. Then 24 and 27. 30 and 33. 36 and 39. 42 and 45. 48 and 51. 54 and 57, 60 and 63, 66 and 69, 72 and 75, 78 and 81, 84 and 87, 90 and 93, 96 and 99. Now we can go and if you look at the uh, number 4, you'll find that all of the multiples of 4 have already been done because we did the multiples of 2, and 4 is already a multiple of 2. So by doing the multiples of 2, that means we've already done all the multiples of 4. Okay, so now we can go on to the multiples of 5. Now the multiples of 5, we know are all the numbers that end with 5 or 0. So we've got all the ones that end with 0 done already, but we haven't got all the ones that end with 5, but we mustn't do the very first one, so we're going to start with 15, which is already done and go down to 95. Okay, then we're going to go on to 7. Again, we're not going to do 7 itself. We will start with the next multiple of 7. So I've got 14, and then 21, 28, and then 35, and 42, and 49, and 56, and 63, and 70. Then we've got 77, and 84, and 91, and then 98. So th those are all the multiples of 7. Then the multiples of 8, again, we've already done that because it was done when we did the multiples of 2. And the multiples of 9, we've already done when we did the multiples of 3. That means we already did the multiples of 9 as well. And then the multiples of 10 are already done as well. So that means that we have now finished doing all the multiples that we needed to do. Now, the rest of the numbers that you see over here are actually all of the numbers that are prime. Everything that we haven't colored in, are prime. all of those are prime numbers. Okay, now I want you to have a look at those numbers, and let's see if you notice something about them. You should see that 2 is the only even prime number. All of the other prime numbers are odd. So if you look back at this again, you'll see over here that 2 is the only even prime number. Every single other prime number is odd. And that's because every other prime, every other even number has 2 as a factor, which means it can't be prime because 2 is not the same as those numbers. And so that means that those numbers have a factor apart from 1 and themselves. So 2 is the only even prime number you can get. All the other prime numbers will always be odd. Okay. Now we are going to look at prime factors. Okay, there we go. Prime factors are basically all of the factors of a given number, which are also prime numbers. Okay, so let's do an example where we're going to find the prime factors of the number 12. So we're going to list all the prime factors of the number 12. So first of all, what we need to do is we need to list the factors of the number 12. So I'm going to start off by writing down my factors of 12. Now we learned how to do this already. So the first factor is going to be 1 and the last factor is going to be 12. We know that, okay? Then 12 is even, so the next factor is 2. And if we divide 12 by 2, we'll get 6. So this factor over here will be 6. Then the next number after 2 is 3. If I divide 12 by 3, 
it does work and I get 4. So the next factor over here is going to be 4. And because 3 and 4 are right next to each other, I don't need to worry about trying to find any other factors. So those are all the factors of the number 12. Now we're going to go and find out which of those factors are prime numbers. So the prime factors of the number 12 are, let's have a look at these. Number 1 is not prime because it never is prime. Number 2 is a prime number. Okay, and number 3 is a prime number. Number 4 is not a prime number because it has a factor of 2. It's even. Number 6 is also not a prime number because it's also even. And then number 12 obviously is not a prime number because it has all of these other factors that we've just been listing over here. Okay, so the prime factors of the number 12 are 2 and 3. So that is how you're going to find the prime factors of a number. First, you list all of the factors and then you identify which of those factors are prime numbers. Okay, so now you're going to do a couple of them or three of them yourself. So I'm going to give you some time to do this. You're going to find and list the prime factors of each of the numbers 15, 48, and 60. I'm going to give you, uh, let's just make this big. Okay, I'm going to give you three minutes to work on this one. Okay, you should hopefully be done with that by now, so let's go through those examples. So the first question was for the number 15. Question A, we have to find first the factors of 15. Okay, so the factors of 15, our first factor is going to be 1, and our last factor is going to be 15. Then 15 is not even, so 2 isn't a factor, but 3 does go into 15, and if we divide 15 by 3, we get 5. And then there's 
only one number between 3 and 5, that's 4, and 4 doesn't go into 15. So those are all of our factors of 15. So now we can write our prime factors of 15. So over here, 1 again is not prime, but 3 is a prime number, and 5 is a prime number, and then 15 is not. So our prime factors for 15 are 3 and 5. Those are our prime numbers. There we go. Number B, we've got to find, first of all, the factors of the number 48. So we start with 1, and we're going to have quite a few factors for this one, so I'm going to write 48 with a bit more space over here. And then our next factor, this is even, so our next factor is going to be 2. And if we divide 48 by 2, we get 24. Then 3 does go into 48. And if we divide 48 by 3, we get 16. 4 goes into 48. And if I divide 4 by 48, 48 by 4, I get 12. 5 does not go into 48, but 6 does go into 48. And if I divide 48 by 6, I get 8. And then the only number between 6 and 8 is 7, and 7 doesn't go into 48. So we're done with the factors of 48. Now we need to go and find the prime factors. So we need to identify which of these factors are also prime numbers. So 2 is a prime number, and 3 is a prime number. We know that 1 isn't. And then 4, 6, 8, 12, 16, 24, and 48, all of those are even numbers, which means that none of them can be prime numbers because we said that the only even prime number we have is the number 2. So none of those can be prime numbers. So our only prime factor is for the number 48 are 2 and 3. Okay, now we're going to do C, which is 60. So the factors of 60 first. We start off with 1. And again, I need even more space for this one. So I'm going to put my 60 over there. Okay, and then again, 60 is an even number, so I can divide by 2. So 2 is a factor. And when I divide by 2, I get 30. Then 3 is a factor. If I divide by 3, I get 20. 4 is also a factor. If I divide by 4, I get 15. 5 is a factor. If I divide by 5, I get 12. 6 is a factor. If I divide by 6, I get 10. Okay. And then 7 is not a factor. 8 is not a factor. And 9 is not a factor. So we are now done with all of the factors of 60. Now we need to go and identify which of those factors are prime numbers. So 1 is not, but 2 is a, a prime number, 3 is a prime number, 4 isn't, and 5 is a prime number. Then that's even, so it's not. That's even, that's even. 15 has the factors of 3 and 5, so 15 isn't prime. 20, 30, and 60 are all even, so they can't be prime numbers. So our prime factors of 60 are 2, 3, and 5. Okay, so that is how you find prime factors of a particular number. Now the next thing that we're going to go on to is called prime factorization. Now, prime factorization is a little bit different to just identifying the prime factors. When we are factorizing a number, we are writing it as factors multiplied together to give us that number. Okay, so prime factorization is a way of writing a number where we only use the prime numbers that make that number and we multiply them together in order to get that number. Okay, so if I take the number 6, I could write it as 2 multiplied by 3, where 2 and 3 are both prime factors of 6. And when I write it as 2 multiplied by 3, I have now factorized it. So I've split it up into its factors, which are being multiplied together to give us 6. So factorization is kind of like the opposite of multiplication. Okay, we're going backwards, where we've got the answer and we want to know what we had to multiply together to get that answer. So we are now working out what those factors were that we multiplied together to get, the, to get that answer. But we're not just taking any random factor pairs. So I'm not going to say 1 multiplied by 6. I want to know which prime numbers I multiply together 
to get that number. Okay, so we are going to learn how to do prime factorization. Now, prime factorization is very useful in a number of different situations. You can use it to help you to work out roots, square roots and cube roots, etc. Okay, when you're working with large numbers, uh, numbers that you wouldn't necessarily know the roots of, and you can also use prime factorization to find the lowest common factor, the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple of large numbers. Okay, so we have already learned how to find highest common factor and lowest common multiple of smaller numbers, but it is useful to know how to do it for large numbers where you can't sit and write out all of the factors because it's just not going to be um, feasible to do it. So first of all, we are going to learn how to actually factorize it um, in the first place, how to write a number as a product of its prime factors. That's what I've done over here. I took six and I wrote it as a product, product being multiplication. So I wrote it as a product of its prime factors. Okay, so that is what we're going to learn how to do now. So first we're going to do an example where we are going to express the number 504 as a product of its prime factors. And to do this, we're going to use what we call the ladder method. Okay, so with the ladder method, we take the number 504, whatever number that you have that you need to factorize, and we are going to draw a line down like that, and we are going to start dividing this number by its prime factors. Now, you should, I would recommend always starting with the smallest prime number and working your way up from there. So the smallest prime number is 2. If you can see that this is even, you know that it's going to be divisible by 2. So I can put a 2 over here because I know that 2 is going to work. Okay, 2 is going to be a prime or is going to be a factor of 504. So I write down the 2 and then I'm going to divide 504 by 2. Okay, now you can use your calculator for this if you need to. Um, and you should get 252. So you divide 504 by 2 and you get 252. Now you see over here that it is still an even number. So you can still use 2. You can use 2 as many times as, you, as possible until it is no longer an even number. So I'm going to write down 2 again. Okay, once I've written down 2 again, I'm going to divide by 2 again. And this time I get 126. Okay, this is still an even number, which means I can still use 2. So I'm going to write down 2 again. And then I'm going to divide by 2, and this time I get 63. Now, 63 is not an even number, which means that I now can't use 2. Okay, so I've used 2 as much as I can. Now I'm done with 2. Now I go on to the next prime number, which is 3. Now let's check. 6 plus 3 gives me 9. 3 then does go into 63, so I can put a 3 over here. And I'm going to divide by 3, and that gives me 21. Now, 3 also goes into 21. So I'm going to put a 3 again, and I'm going to divide by 3, and that gives me 7. Now, 3 does not go into 7, but 7 goes into 7. 7 is the next prime number that I can use that actually will work. 5 is the next prime number after 3, but 5 doesn't go into 7. As soon as you end up with something that you can see is a prime number, you can just use it. So in this case, it is 7, and I divide by 7, and I get 1. When you are doing the ladder method, you start with the smallest prime number, which is 2. If you can use it, you use it until you can't use it anymore. Then you go on to the next prime number. If you can use it, you use it until you can't use it anymore. And you keep going like that until you get to 1. When you got to 1, then you're done with your ladder. Now we can go and write it as a product of its prime factors. So these are all the prime factors over here. Now, what we did is we took that number and we kept on dividing, 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 dividing. So if I want to use these numbers to get back to that, what do I need to do? I need to multiply them all together. So 504 is the same as 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 7. If I multiply all of those together, I will end up with 504. Now you can actually use your calculator to check it. If I can find my calculator, it would be great, which I can't right now. So if you have a calculator on hand, you can use it to check it. Okay, but that is how you write it as a product of its prime factors. So now you're going to do the same thing for 
two examples over here. You are going to do the ladder method to write each of these numbers as products of their prime factors. So you're going to first do A uh, and write 2160 as a product of its prime factors. I'm going to give you two minutes to work on that one. Okay, you should hopefully be done with that by now. So let's go through that example. Okay, so for question A, we had 2160. And we have to write that as a product of its prime factor. So we're going to start off by doing our ladder method. So we've got 2160, which is a, an even number. So I'm going to use 2 first. So when I divide by 2, I'm going to get 1080. Then I'm going to divide by 2 again because it is still an even number. And that will give me 540. Then I'm going to divide by 2 again because again it is still an even number. And that gives me 270. Divide by 2 again and that gives me 135. Okay, now it is no longer an even number. So I can't use 2 anymore. So let's just check if 3 is going to be a, a factor of this number. So if I add 1 and 3 and 5, I get 9, which is a multiple of 3, which means that I know that I can use 3. So I'm going to use 3 over here. And then I'm going to divide by 3, and that gives me 45. Divide by 3 again, because 3 is still a factor, and that gives you 15. 3 goes into 15 as well, so I'm going to use 3 and divide by 3, and that gives me 5. Now, 3 does not go into 5, but the next prime number is 5, and I can use it over here, and that gives me 1. So now I've got down to 1, which means that I have gone as far as I can. So now I'm going to go and write 2160. Therefore, 2160 is equal to, I've got how many 2s? 1, 2, 3, 4 2s. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 1, 2, 3 3s. 3 times 3 times 3, and then multiply that by 5. Okay, so that is how you do question A. Now I'm going to give you time to work on question B. Again, I'm giving you 2 minutes.
Okay, you should hopefully be done with that one now. So let's go through question B. So for question B, we had the number 26,460. Again, it is even, so I'm going to start with 2. And when I divide by 2, I get 13,230. It is still even, so I'm going to divide by 2 again. And that gives me 6,615. Now, it's not even anymore. So now I'm going to go and check for 3. So 6 plus 6 plus 1 plus 5 is 18. That is divisible by 3, which means that 3 will go into this whole number. So I'm going to use 3 as my next prime number. So I'm going to divide by 3, and that gives me 2,205. Then I'm going to check again. 2 plus 2 plus 5 is 9. So 3 will still work. So I'm going to divide by 3 again. That gives me 735. Now let's check again. 7 plus 3 is 10, plus 5 is 15. Again, 3 will work, so I'm going to put 3 over here. Divide by 3, and that gives me 245. Okay, and then I'm going to check it again. So 2 plus 4 is 6, plus 5 is 11. So 3 does not go into 11, which means that 3 is not going to be a factor now. So now I go on to the next prime number, which is 5. And I see over here, ah, yes, it does end in a 5. So that means that 5 will work. So I'm going to divide by 5, and that will give me 49. Now, 5 doesn't go into 49, but the next prime number is 7, and 7 does go into 49. So if I divide 49 by 7, I will get 7, and then I can divide by 7 again, and I will get 1. So now I'm done with, all, with my ladder method. Now I can go and write 26,460 as a product of its prime factors. So that is, there are two twos over there, so it's two multiplied by two times. There are one, two, three threes, so three times three times three times. There is one five, and there are two sevens. So that is how you write 26,460 as a product of its prime factors. Okay, now I said that we're not just doing this for fun, we're not just doing this for for the sake of wasting time, we're actually doing it for a reason because it becomes useful. So now we're going to learn how to use this prime factorization to help us to write number or to help us to identify the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple for a pair of numbers. Okay, so the example that we're going to look at first. Okay, so we, we're using prime factorization to find the HCF and the LCM. Okay, so our first example is going to be Find the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple of the numbers 4,800 and 2,160. Okay. So first of all, the first thing I need to do is I need to take both of these numbers and I need to write them as products of the prime factor. So I'm going to use the latter method for each of the two numbers separately. Okay, so I'm going to do 4,800 over here, and it is even, so I'm going to use 2, that gives me 2,400, then that's still even, so I can divide by 2 again, that gives me 1,200, that is still even, so I can divide again, and that gives me 600, it's still even, so I can divide by 2 again, and that gives me 300. It's still even, gives me 150. It is still even, and that gives me 75. Now it is not even anymore, so now I'm going to check. 7 plus 5 is 12, so yes, 3 will work. I'm going to divide by 3, and that will give me 25. Now, 3 doesn't go into 25, but 5 does, so I'm going to use 5 over there. Divide by 5, that gives me 5 again. Um and divide by 5, and that gives me 1. Okay, so 4,800 I can now write. Yeah, 4,800 is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 6. Okay, then we also have times 3. And then we also have times 5 and times 5. Okay. 
Now I also have the number 2160 to do. So let's take a look at 2160. Okay, so our ladder, we start with 2 and we divide by 2 and we get 1080. Still even, so I divide by 2 again and that gives me 9. No. 540. Okay. Divide by 2 again and that gives me 270. Divide by 2 again and that gives me 135. Then 1 plus 3 plus 5 is 9. So 3 will work. So divide by 3 and that gives me 45. 3 will work again. So I divide by 3 and that gives me 15. 3 will work again. Divide by 3 and that gives me 5. And then divide by 5 and that gives me 1. So now I can write that 2160 is equal to 2. There are four twos. Now I'm going to try and write these underneath the same factors that I have for 4,800. Okay, so I've got 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So there are four twos which are the same. Okay, then over here I had six twos. So I'm going to leave these two blank over here and then I'm going to go onto my threes. I've got three threes over there. So times 3 times 3 times 3. I'm going to try and put those in. And then I've got times Five. Okay, it's a little bit of a squash over there because I didn't know how many threes I was going to need to fit in. Okay, so now we are going to go and use this to find our highest common factor and our lowest common multiple. So to find the highest common factor, we are going to take all of the um, factors which are common between the two numbers. Okay, so we're going to say over here... Oops. I've got those are common, those are common, those are common, and those are common. These are not common because I only have them in the 4,800. I don't have them in the 2,160, so they're not common. But over here, I've got those are common. Then these are not common. They only appear for the 2,160. And then I've got those which are common. So for my highest common factor... I'm going to take each of the things that I have circled, but I'm only going to write each pair down once, okay? So I'm going to write down 2 for that pair, multiplied by 2 for that pair, multiplied by 2 for that pair, multiplied by 2 for that pair, and then over here I've got times 3, and then over here I've got times 5. So those are all of the common factors between those two numbers. So my highest common factor is going to be the result of multiplying all of those together. Okay, so now I'm going to use my calculator quickly to work that out. So I've got 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 and that gives me 240. Okay, then we are going to find our lowest common multiple. Now the lowest common multiple is similar to the highest common factor except that we don't only use the ones that are common, we also use the ones that are not common, but we still only write down the ones that are common once. Okay, so I'm still going to only write down 1, 2 for this pair over here and I'm going to write down 1, 2 for that pair, I'm going to write down 1, 2 for that pair and 1, 2 for that pair, but then I'm also going to write down this 2 and that 2. I didn't do that when I was doing the highest common factor. I only wrote down the ones that were common. Now, for the lowest common multiple, I also write down the ones that aren't common. But I don't just write down everything there plus everything there as well. I All the ones that are common, I only write down once. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Those are all the common 2s. And then we have two other 2s over here which are not common. So times another 2 and another 2. Okay, so these ones over here were common, not the, those ones over there, were common. Okay, then we have times 3. Okay, and then we have over here another two threes which are not common. So we're going to write those ones down as well. 
sorry. Okay, so this one over here was common, but those ones were not common. Okay, then we've got times 5, this one is common, and then we also have one that was not common. So all the ones that I have outlined over here are the same as what I had over there, but I also have these extra ones that I didn't have for my highest common factor. They are the ones that were not common. So now when I find my lowest common multiple, I'm going to multiply all of those together. So I have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, those are the common ones, times another 2, 2's. Then I have times 3, which is the common one, times another 2, 3's. Then I have times 5, which was common, and then times another 5. So when I multiply all of those together, I get 43,200. And that is my lowest common multiple for 4,800 and 2,160. Those two numbers are numbers that you would not normally have been able to work out the lowest common multiple or the highest common factor because they are just too big to be able to write down all the factors to be able to identify the highest common factor or to work out the lowest common multiple. It's just going to take too long. But using the prime factorization, we're able to do it in a much more systematic and much quicker way. Okay, so now I want you to do an example on your own where you are going to try and find the, low, the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple for two numbers using prime factorization. Okay, so for this example, I'm going to give you five minutes to work on it. So you have to use prime factorization using the ladder method to find the prime factor or to write 6,300 and 2,520, both of them as product of the prime factors, and then use that to find the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple. Okay, so you have five minutes to work on that.
Okay, you should hopefully be done with that by now. So let's go through that example. Okay, so first of all, we had to find the or write 6300 as a product of its prime factors. So 6300 is even, so I can divide by 2, and that gives me 3150. Then it is still even, so I can divide by 2 again, and that gives me 1,575. But now it's not even anymore, so now I need to check if 3 goes into it. So I have 1 plus 5 is 6, plus 7 is 13, plus 5 is 18. 3 goes into 18, which means that 3 will work with this. So I'm going to divide by 3, and that gives me 525. Okay, I'm going to check again. 5 plus 2 is 7, plus 5 is 12. So 3 does go into that again. So I'm going to divide by 3, and that gives me 175. If I check it again, 1 plus 7 is 8, plus 5 is 13. 3 doesn't go into 13, so I know that 3 isn't a factor anymore. So now I'm going to go and use my next factor, which is 5, because I can see that it ends in a 5, which means that 5 is a factor of 175. So I'm going to divide by 5, and that gives me 35. It still ends with a 5, which means that 5 is still a factor, so I can use 5 again. And when I divide by 5, I get 7. And then when I divide by 7, which is the next one, because 5 doesn't work anymore, I end up with 1. So that is 6300's ladder. Now let's go and have a look at the ladder for 2520. It starts off even, so I'm going to use 2. Divide by 2, that gives me 1,260. Then I divide by 2 again because it's still even, and that gives me 630. It's still even, so I'm going to divide by 2 again, but this time it gives me 315, which is now not even anymore. So now I'm going to check and I'm going to say 3 plus 1 is 4, plus 5 is 9. 3 does go into 9, so I can use 3. Divide 3 in there, and that gives me 105. 1 plus 5 is 6, so 3 will work again. So I divide 3 into that, and that gives me 35. 3 doesn't go into 35, but 5 does go into 35. If I divide by 5, I get 7. Then I divide by 7, and I get 1. So that's what my ladder looks like for 2520. So now we're going to take both of those numbers, and we're going to write them as products of their prime factors. But I'm going to try and make sure that I write them so that the... the same factors are underneath each other. Okay, so I've got two twos over here, and here I've got three twos. So I'm going to start with my two twos, and with my three twos underneath, and then I have the extra two over there. Then I've got two threes, so I'm going to put my two threes over here, and here I've also got two threes, so I'm just going to put them underneath like that. And then I've got two fives, And here I've only got one 5, so I put my 5 over there, and I'm going to have a gap. And then I've got a 7, and on this one I've also got a 7. So those are both of my numbers now written as products of their prime factors. So let's identify which factors are common. Okay, so I've got over here, that is common, and that is common. Because I wrote them underneath each other like this, the common ones will always be in columns. Okay, so those are common those are common, those are common, and those are common. And the ones that are not in columns like that, the ones that are on their own, are the ones that aren't common. Okay, so for my highest common factor, I'm going to write down only the ones that are common once. So I've got a 2, which is common, times another 2, which is common. Then I've got over here a 3, which is common, times another 3, which is common. Then I've got a 5, which is common. And then I've got a 7, which is common. And now I'm going to use my calculator to see what that all gives me. So 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5 times 7 gives me 4,620. So my highest common factor is 4,620. Now I'm going to find my lowest common multiple. So now remember, for the lowest common multiple, I'm going to write down all the ones that are common, just like I did for the highest common factor, once for each pair, and then I'm also going to write down the ones that are not common as well. So I'm going to write down over here 
the two once times this two. Then I also have this two, which isn't common, so I'm going to write that down too. Then I have three, which was common, and another three, which was common, and then I have a five, which is common, and then I have a five, which wasn't common, and then I have a seven, which was common. So I'm writing down everything, but the ones that are common, I only write down once for each pair. And then I'm going to use my calculator to work all of that out. So I have 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5 times 5 times 7. And that gives me 12,600. So my highest common factor I wrote this down incorrectly, I saw it wrong. This was 1,260, maybe I typed it in wrong. Okay, 1,260, and my lowest common multiple is 12,600. Okay, so that is how you work with prime numbers and composite numbers, and how you use prime numbers to help you to work out the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple for large numbers that are too big to write out all the factors and multiples for. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.